What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking about this guy right here, the Damiki rig and why you should be throwing it right now. When I say right now, I don't mean like right now, right now, but the time is coming. Still today, it is still kind of that warm trend. It's kind of uncharacteristically warm. Um, but that all ends tonight. We have a storm coming in, freezing temperatures, overnight lows are gonna be crashing. Uh, it is the end, I believe, of that warm summer kind of fall transition. I mean, it's, it's middle of November, right? So it's go time. But uh, I want you guys to be thinking about this guy right here, the Damiki rig. This became really, really popular uh, a few years ago and it's just more and more uh, it's gained more and more popularity as more and more guys are fishing into the colder weather months. You know, you know they're not necessarily staying out in the deer stand all all fall and into winter. They're actually out on the water and they're chasing cold weather bass. And this is one of the best techniques from now all the way through winter. So, hopefully, you guys are already familiar with this technique. And if you're not, Hopefully by the end of this video, you will understand more about it and why you should uh, add it to your arsenal. Uh, I was really hoping to shoot this video out on the water and uh, and uh, show you guys how to cast and all, and all that stuff, but it is ripping wind. Like I said, that front's coming in. It's really big out on the river. So um, gonna tuck back in this little pocket and, and get and try and get out of as much wind as possible but uh, look for a more in-depth on the water uh, fishing showing you how to shake the baits I'm gonna show you all that here as much as I can in this little channel but uh, here we go guys the Damiki rig so what is it it is this guy right here okay it is your favorite swim bait head as long as it has a 90 degree line tie, as long as the line tie comes straight up off of the head of the bait and you put your favorite two and a half to three inch swim bait or fluke style bait on it, on your jig head. What this thing does what, where it shines is, like I said, right now, all the way through winter, when these fish are chasing bait fish, when they're chasing shad, um, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna fish this where you would typically throw your finesse swim bait, your 2.8 finesse swim bait, 2.8 Kitex, that sort of, sort of stuff. Um, but this is a different technique. Basically, flip this out here. You let this go, you, you use your electronics. Again, we're offshore. This is like your 20 to 60 foot depth. I know that seems really deep to some of you guys, but believe it or not, this bait shines in deep, clear, cold water. So as we get those overnight lows and we get uh, those water temps dropping, you know, this thing really shines in your mid to low 50s to, to mid to high 40s in your water temps. That's what you really want. But you're gonna basically hang this over the fish that you're seeing on your 2D and your forward facing sonar, if you have it, that's completely changed the game with this technique. But your 2D sonar, you're gonna see that arch down there and you're gonna sit there and you're gonna hang this bait above its head. And a lot of times those fish will just come up and eat it, even if they don't want to, uh, to feed, even if they're not in a feeding mood, right? This thing really shines. I mean, if a fish is chasing shad and actively feeding, blown up on top chasing, you can basically throw a lot of baits in there and quickly move it and get them to eat it. But when they're not doing that and you can still see them on your electronics, it's really hard to beat this guy. Now, again, the Damiki rig made popular by Damiki, the actual armor shad bait and the Damiki head. So it's pretty cool, congratulations congratulations, Damiki on having an entire technique named after your stuff. Uh, pretty cool. 
But so the Dabiki rig, it is your favorite, like I said, 2.8, three inch, primarily a, a fork tail fluke style bait. This is the armor shad rigged on a little guppy head. Again, 90 degree line tie, that is really important. I'm gonna talk about that here shortly. But this is a bait that really produces when those fish don't want to actively feed. Uh, you sit there and you hang it above their head. You don't fish it on bottom, you can, but uh, you fish it up off bottom a couple feet or, or just a couple feet above the fish that you're seeing on your electronics head and you sit there and you shake it subtly. And that little fork tail is just down there just doing that, right? Just, just enough to get a little bit of action. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to completely shake your rod and uh, make it look like that, <laughs> that bait fish is having a seizure or something. You just want that little, little tail back there just dancing around and you want this thing looking like a dumb, stupid, lazy, non-moving bait fish. But look how good this thing looks. Again, that's that armor shad paired up on that uh, Dirty Jigs guppy head. We really like that head for this technique because it does have a more stout hook. Um, gonna talk about heads and baits here in just a second, but I wanna talk about uh, why um, a little bit more. So these fish are keyed in on smaller bait fish. Water temps, air temps have really dropped. Those fish are looking to feed up. Um, when you can see them on your electronics schooled up down there, like I said, in that 20 to 60 foot range, that's a huge gap, I know, but in that depth, um, you drop this thing straight down, you fish it off the bow of your boat, you can cast out 20, 30 foot, you don't need to make a long cast unless you're seeing them on your forward facing sonar, but you cast out, let that thing go down, watch it on your electronics, and then sit there and hover it. Kind of like you would do a jigging spoon, you know, you're fishing vertically, but instead of doing this motion, you're literally doing this motion and they just have to come up. They're curious, right? They have to come up. You know, this time of the year, since it is still warm, you can get more active. You know, you can take your favorite little swim bait, something with a paddle tail versus the fork tail, Even either way. You can drop this thing down there, use a heavier head, maybe a, a 3 8 or a half ounce, drop this thing down there, let it go past the school of fish, and then reel it up and come up, and then hang it there. They're gonna, they're gonna chase and they're gonna eat right? So it's just, they're not used to having something just sit there in their area. So like I said, that's where this really shines when those fish don't necessarily want to feed. Um, so as we're kind of transitioning into winter and our, our water temps, our air temps are dropping, um, as we're on the warmer side of this transition, you can get more um, erratic with your shakes and you can get more erratic with your drops and you're reeling up and you want that bait going down and coming up through the through the school of fish down up and then hovering right so you can do that so so why we talked about for the most part that is why these fish are keyed in on small bait and they don't like things just sitting there in their area uh, they are born to kill they're looking to feed that is where that thing really really shines now as far as where typically this time of the year i'm looking for the backs of cuts you know, if I go into a large creek arm, I'm gonna idle that creek channel and I'm gonna be looking on the electronics for a bait ball. You know, it's all about bait this time of the year. Hopefully we've driven that that in. It's all about, about bait this time of the year. If you can find the schools of bait, the you know, shad, uh, you know, baby crappie, baby blue, whatever it may be on your fishery, you will find the bass. So look for that bait, look for the bait balls. Uh, so you're idling into the back of a cut, you're on that creek channel, you know, I like to call the back of a cut kind of the guts, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is uh, where these fish are going to congregate. And eventually, that's where they're going to winter. They're going to fish, they're going to live in that deeper area of that bay. You know, your bluff walls, even your long tapering points out on your highland reservoirs, you know, those fish are going to be moving around, chasing that school of bait. That's where the forward facing sonar has made it so so um, easy to stay on those fish. You know, especially like if you're an offshore guy and you have like the target lock, you have that turret on there. Um, you know, you can sit there and spot lock and then turn your uh, beam, your sonar beam, your, your live beam, and really stay on that school of bait and, uh, you know, get that bait, your bait down through there. So, um, 
so bluff walls, long tapering points, uh, anywhere where bait fish are going to congregate, that's really what you're going to be looking for. You know, and then as we go into really the heart of winter, hopefully, like I said, we'll be doing some actually in-depth uh, fishing this technique to show you guys how cool and how awesome it works, um, especially in those cold weather, cold water months. Um, as that water temps drop, as those water temps drop, that's where you're going to look for, um, you know, a little bit deeper, and you're going to look for fish out you know schooled up on the edge on the break of you know creek channels river bends that sort of stuff all right so we covered the why and we covered the where um let's talk about baits and heads i have three three real key baits and three real key heads for you guys to really simplify this for you um the cool thing about this technique is you can do it on a light spinning rod like your drop shot rod or your your weightless wacky rig rod Nico rig rod whatever or you can throw it on a light bait caster so if you're a guy that doesn't like to throw it on a spinning rod you can throw this guy again this is like this is a uh, that's 3 16 ounce I believe yep that's a 3 16 ounce Demiki head with that 3 inch armor shad on there so it's a, a fairly finesse size bait but you can throw this on a bait caster. Again, you're not looking to cast this this far. You know, usually when I'm fishing this, unless I see something out there on the on the Mega Live, um, I'm usually looking at my 2D sonar. I'm seeing what's in and around below uh, the boat. So, you know, I can flip this thing out there, flip it out there, maybe 10, 12, 15 feet off the bow, let this thing go down. I'm looking at it on my 2d sonar or my forward facing sonar okay it hits bottom i'm gonna reel it up <laughs> just had a just had a bait just or uh look like a gizzard shad flash on my bait um reel it up so it's about a foot to two feet above where i'm seeing the fish maybe there's a thermocline maybe there's you know a depth that you're targeting these fish you want to be just above that and you want the key thing is you want these fish looking up you don't want them looking down on bottom. You want them looking up to your bait that's just that's just sitting there. Again, that tail's down there. You know, you're not moving it too much. You might just be shaking your wrist just a little bit, giving that tail just a little bit of action. But you don't want this thing hopping up and down and up and down unless you see the fish actively going and then you can let this thing crash through there and then and burn it up. But uh, for the most part, it's a fairly slow fishing technique. Again. Well, 3 16 ounce head, uh, quarter ounce head works really well. Here's the quarter. Uh, you can see what's cool about this head is it has the weight farther back on, uh, on the head. Now what is super important about this setup is you want your bait sitting just like that in the water. You see that line tie? That's why you want the 90 degree because a lot of times you're fishing this basically vertical. You don't need your line tie out in front like you would a swim bait, right? You want it, it's not like you're you're casting and reeling this bait back to you, but you want this line tie 90 degrees, and then you want this bait sitting as uh, parallel in the water as, as possible. So that's that guy right there. As far as line, I'm typically throwing braid to leader. It's typically like uh, on the bait caster, I'm throwing 20 pound braid to like a eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. This one's actually straight fluorocarbon, that's 10 pound. Um, but typically I'm throwing braid to leader. And then as far as, as the spinning rods, you know, as far as rods themselves, you want something six foot eight to seven foot two and your medium light to medium power rod. Basically something that you would throw your lighter finesse stuff on, your little 2.8 swim baits, uh, your little drop shots, that sort of stuff. Here is the little guppy head. This is one of my favorite, favorite combos. This is a little dirty jigs guppy head. And what you'll notice with all these besides the line tie, you want a really realistic looking eyeball. You want something that looks fairly realistic. And that's paired up with this guy right here. We'll talk about baits in just a second, but that's the um, Strike, Strike King 
Z2. It's uh, made by Z-Man. It's got the Elaztec. What's cool about this bait, actually, we won't talk about baits yet. We'll talk about that in just a second. But what's cool about this head, super realistic looking. Um, it just pairs up really good with that bait right there. But look how good that little finesse setup looks. Again, you're paying attention to your electronics. You see those fish out there. Flip it out, you watch your bait come down. Uh, you can even stop it right before it gets to their head. And then again, you know, just real subtle shakes. You don't, you're not whipping it up and down. Uh, you just want this thing just, whew, just, um, just shimmy enough to look like a lazy, dumb shad. Again, 90 degree line tie on the guppy head. I think we talked about already why that's important. You want that thing sitting as parallel as possible. Um, last head, and then we'll talk baits. This is the little, it's VMC. This is, uh, if you like big eyed heads, this is the VMC Moon Eye Jig, that, and it's paired up, but that's the um, Super Fluke Junior. Again, all little fork tails, uh, but again, real subtle action. I typically fish the heads in 360, oh, some of them aren't available in 316, so either eighth or a quarter. If I need to go heavier, I can go to that three eighths if I'm fishing really deep. Sorry about the wind, guys, it's picking up. Uh, but again, you're just you're just moving this thing just enough to give that thing a little bit of action. Um, if you need to, like I said, you can let it crash down and, and burn it up, and they'll chase. Uh, one thing to to note is when you're watching your fish on your your live or your 2D sonar, and they're coming up with your bait, the farther you can get them to move to chase your bait, eventually they're going to eat. It's it seems like. Uh, if I'm seeing them on my electronics and they're curious, they're inspecting, they keep coming up and I'm reeling it up and it comes up and it's slowly coming up. If I pause it, shake it a little bit, they just keep coming and they just eat it. Uh, it's it's really, really cool. It seems like kind of a, a just a do nothing technique, but it works extremely well. And you're probably thinking, well, why not a drop shot? You can do the same thing with a drop shot, except you're gonna have your weight hanging down. You know, you're literally suspending uh, your bait in front of these fish that are also suspended. I think we've all realized here in the last few years, especially with the advancements of uh, sonar and forward-facing sonar, there are a lot of suspended fish. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it for years that suspended fish were the last frontier in bass fishing, and now it makes it so much easier to stay on them and man, they just pushed a bunch of bait up right here. Uh, stay on the schools of bait, on those individual fish and present a bait to them. Um, so you suspend your bait above that suspended fish and it just drives them crazy. So we talked about heads. Now let's talk about my three favorite baits and we'll wrap it up. Um, hands down, my favorite is actually the Domeki Armor Shad. You know, that's the bait that made this thing uh, really kick off. You know, so many tournaments were won. Uh, the last few years on the Domeki rig and a version of it. Uh, lots of really cool colors. I'll link my favorites down below in the video description, but for the most part, I'm going whites and shad bait fish colors. That's, you know, I don't really use uh, chartreuse and blue too often because it kind of goes hand in hand with that real natural looking head. These fish get to sit there and just inspect that bait, right? They get to inspect it, they get to look at it. So I'm really careful about the paint on my heads, my eyeballs, where my line is on that line tie. I want that thing coming vertically off of that. We already talked about that, but I want the bait matching kind of the head because this thing's just sitting there, right? And they're just sitting there looking at it. Now is the chance for them to be like, yeah, that doesn't look right, right? So if you're burning a bait past them and it's reacting and they're chasing it down, you have a little bit more wiggle room or play to mess around with colors and such. But this technique, I go with kind of your ghosty whites, your kind of iridescence, see-through stuff, and then your really natural colors, you know, your electric shads. Um, 
I just, it's, it's personal preference. I'm sure there's guys out there that catch them on the real bright stuff, morning dawns and chartreuses and stuff. But for me, for the most part, I'm going as natural as possible. Look how good that looks. But again, you know, matching the heads up with the color of the bait, um, probably overthinking it, but it definitely gives me the confidence when I'm fishing for those fish offshore. So talked about the Demiki, the Armor Shad, Number two is going to be this guy right here, the Z2. I already talked about it a little bit. Had one rigged, I thought, on my, yep, on my rod. But I want to show you guys. This is actually made, it's Strike King, but it's actually made by Z-Man. It has the Elaztec in it. And what makes this bait so special is it is high float. So it's easier to keep this thing uh, natural looking. You don't want these baits sitting head up, right, or head down. You want them sitting, when you see a shad in the water, they're sitting, they're not sitting like this, they're not sitting like this, they're sitting like this, right? So same thing with your bait. But that high float just lets you, uh, little tiny shimmies, doesn't move the bait a lot, but look at that tail, the thing just has a ton of action. Now as you go into the colder weather months, you're gonna go away from this one and you're gonna go into something with a little less action, and that's really where that Demiki shines. Last but not least, if you wanna get some inexpensive baits in this category, the Zoom, the Super Fluke Junior. Uh, I had one of those rigged up on the VMC. That's that little Super Fluke Junior. Again, same forky tail. We all know how good a fluke works, right? Especially when they're keyed in on, on bait and we're fishing around grass. But suspending this thing up there, letting that tail dance, it is money. Uh, last thing that I wanna talk about, a little tip when you're rigging just before you get your bait on there again pay real close attention to how you're rigging it you want this thing symmetrical you want the hook right in the back correctly you want this thing as natural and as good looking as possible pull the little head back put a little dab of super glue and super glue all your baits on there that will definitely help out all right guys there it is that is kind of the uh quick down and dirty to what the Demiki rig is and when and uh where you would use it. Again, we're going into Demiki rig season, so wanted you guys to be uh, have the gear, the heads, the baits that you're gonna need, so as we start transitioning into these colder weather months, and you see Matt and I doing it out on the water in our fishing videos, you guys will already be prepared to take advantage of that. Um, what else? I think that's it. Like I said, I'm looking forward to getting out on the water and actually showing you without just dropping the water in like four feet of water, or dropping the bait in like four feet of water to show you, but actually catching some fish, showing you some forward facing sonar, some 2D sonar, some settings to show you guys really how to put this key technique uh, to the best of your advantage and catch more fish. Guys, the weather's coming. It's probably the last day I'll be throwing a sun shirt on and shorts, but I'm excited. These colder, colder nights, uh, gonna drop those water temps and those fish are going to get active. As always, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. We appreciate you for watching. If you learned something, give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.